What is up everybody? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Justin and I like books. Hopefully you do too because this is going to be one chunker of a haul. So grab you a drink, grab you some pillows to lounge around in, get comfortable. We're going to be here a while. There's too much espresso in that. As always, timestamps are always down in the description, so if you want to jump ahead, jump around, feel free. If you're new here, go ahead and get this out of the way. I also really like music, so I like to occasionally talk about the music I picked up and shout out artists that I don't think get enough love. So we're going to do the music first to get that out of the way. So first I have a new release from the homie Gibby Stites. This is Lost Signals. This is a collection of remixes. There's six tracks, maybe seven tracks on here. All remixes of old, older tracks of his, uh, completely remixed and remastered by the man himself. All of these tracks are only available on this CD. So, of course, I had to grab it. I support everything Gibby does. Uh, and it's dope, so you should check it out. Next up, hot off the heels of Monoxide's solo album, and right behind a new group album coming up, we have Cryptic Collection 5 by Twisted on vinyl. The Cryptic Collection series is, of course, a collection of rare or previously unreleased tracks. Uh, everything on here is pretty rare. I've heard it all before and have it all on stuff before, but that's just because I'm deep into rare audio. Stand out here, stand out here's are like from single tour exclusive singles from like 10 years ago. A track called All These Problems, which was released in either 2020 or 2021 uh, on vinyl only uh, for, my, for an EP for Record Store Day, which I have. Uh, which is really works really good as an EP, but that particular song I love. Now it's available everywhere. Um, and then another song which I really love is on here called Following Me, which was previously released only on this CD called Don't Play This For Anyone, which was released secretly in a box set uh, that I believe the proceeds went to charity. Completely butchered that song on Cryptic Collection 5. They reordered all the verses, which aren't, isn't a big deal, but they cut Madrox's verse off, which was a really good verse, and Madrox now does the hook, and it sounds terrible when he does it. I'm glad I still have this to listen to that version. Anyways, other than that, it's a very good collection. I didn't do this on my last one, but I should, I should start doing this, showing off these sexy vinyls when I pick them up because I appreciate it. And my final bit of music that I picked up is Beats of the Kingdom by Wizard of Loneliness. Wizard of Loneliness does lo-fi and synth wave uh, type stuff. Uh, a lot of it is remixes using video game soundtracks. Uh, in this case, obviously, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. You know, a lot of times he does mashups as well using like popular songs on those beats. So for example, the standout mashup on this one uses Linkin Park's In The End along with one of his beats, which is just mwah, so good. He always has super sexy vinyls too. Usually does two or three variant releases. We're past the music. Let's get into the books. Should we do the disc world up front or should we or should we backload that? Let's do the disc world last. Let's save let's save the best for last. We'll do graphic novels first because we've been on a roll with those on the channel anyways. This first one's uh, relevant because we've got a movie coming out soon. So I have Deadpool, the saga of Wade Wilson. This is just a collection of curated Deadpool stories. The uh, Saga of is basically a series of books that Marvel's been putting out for the last two or three years, maybe a little bit more, that are always character-centric. 
and they usually do it when they've got you know something big coming out usually tied in with the movie so for example the saga of the scarlet witch and vision the king the saga of the once and future conqueror thor the saga of gore the god butcher and so on it's a good series uh they're always pretty beefy so there's a lot of good content in here and from the ones i've picked up They've all been good collections of good stories. This next one was a random pickup at my local used bookstore. Don't know anything about it. I was just checking it out and it sounded interesting. It says written by Anith Hirsch. I'm sure I'm butchering that. And Yuko Oda, illustrated by J.R. Duell. It's called Pixels of You. Uh, basically, it's going to be a love story between a human and a self-aware AI. Uh, but it sounds interesting and the art looked pretty good. And as I say, it was just kind of a random pickup. Uh, I'm always on the lookout for new indie graphic novels to check out. And this piqued my interest. The same situation well, with this one here uh, where it was a random pickup just looking for a new indie book and it sounded interesting this is story by kennedy zhu write it written by colin johnson principal artist ken cho so this is Dalmu, and the blurb on the back reads sean Wu had no idea the secrets kept by his estranged father until his death kicked open the gates to a mysterious world of international tomb rogers and ageless myths. Now the sole heir to his critical legacy, he must survive the darkest terrors haunting the most sought after treasures buried within a globe spanning labyrinth of ancient catacombs in order to solve his father's murder and perhaps even save the world. This one says on here is based on a best selling Chinese novel series, Dalmu Journal. So this next one is written by Raoul and illustrated by Gabor. This is Isabella, volume one. In the midst of feudal Japan, Isabella Ashiwara, a young girl and daughter of an Irish witch and a samurai master roams the countryside with her father's ghost at her side, earning her living by her sword and searching for her long lost sister, Siyoko. Fighting against all odds, Isabella must take charge of her destiny once and for all and face her past in order to move forward. So it's obvious to me why I picked this one up uh, is a combination of the artwork and the fact that it's a samurai tale. I love samurai flicks. I love samurai novels. It was an easy pickup for me. Another random indie pickup. Uh, in this case, I didn't pick it up at the used bookstore, but I picked it up at my local comic shop. Kenny Roten, there we go. In the grungy, punk-inflicted world, Roten creates a cast of the disaffected young characters struggle to find their purpose in life. Faced with the dying, immersive virtual reality game, Eden 2. But when Heck betrays flowers and sells the game to a mysterious corporation, the lines between fantasy and reality begin to blur. As each chapter highlights a new character in the ensemble, the game's impact grows as the world becomes consumed by fantasy. So this next one I'm going to show is technically a graphic novel, uh, but it kind of blends into the next little group I'm going to show. So we'll just go ahead and talk about this next group I'm going to show real quick and get it out of the way because they all kind of blend in. So these next few are basically art books. Long story short, I grew up wanting to be a comic book artist. I kind of got disillusioned, I guess is the word. But I still have always enjoyed art. I enjoy making art. As I got older, I, I've done it less and less. I'm not very good, but I like doing it. Um, but anyways, because I do it so infrequently anymore, I've been trying to inspire myself to get back in the habit of doing it more often. So these next few I picked up basically in that vein. Uh, so the first one is what it is by Linda Berry. This is an interesting one. I'm, I'm reading this right now. It is uh, kind of her sketchbook slash journal slash workbook. It's like a book of Mart art made via stream of consciousness almost. This is kind of the best way 
uh, I can I can describe it. It's really interesting. This is my first experience with uh, Linda Berry's work. Although she keep, there's this monkey she draws a lot that I'm sure I've seen before. It's easier to just let you see this one than to try to explain what it is. So next I have how to keep a sketch journal. There's no author listed here. Uh, this is published by 3D Total Publishing. And we have an editor listed here, Marissa Lewis, but no author. But yep, I mean, that's the title says it all. How to keep a sketch journal. As I said, just inspirational stuff. Uh, and another one in that vein is Sketch Every Day by Simone Grunwald or Grunwald, uh, which is again inspirational stuff via a, a known artist. I'm not super familiar with Simone Grunwald, but uh, I do recognize her work, so practice basics and, and such. But, anyways, moving on to the good stuff. So, next, I have one that I just started reading last night and I'm already enjoying quite a bit. I'm Afraid You've Got Dragons by Peter S. Beagle, author of The Last Unicorn. And this is where I make a confession that has everybody pulling out the torches and pitchforks. I've never read The Last Unicorn. I have never seen the animated film. Anyway, I'm Afraid You've Got Dragons takes place in the Kingdom of Belmontane, uh, which is a run-down kingdom with a run-down old castle. They're trying to marry off the princess. The princess has met a prince who she wants to, to marry, but she wants to impress him, and she's afraid he's going to be disgusted by the castle that is falling apart and overrun by dragons because dragons in this world aren't just the massive monsters they're also like dog-sized ones and rat-sized ones that are like vermin and these are the ones infesting the castle and then we have an another character who we're, we're clearly going to be following Gaius Aurelius Constantine Heliogabalus Thrax He'd rather be named Robert, thankfully, uh, who is a dragon exterminator. But he doesn't want, he doesn't like extermin being a dragon exterminator because he likes dragons. It kind of reminds me of like Douglas Adams writing, for example, or even Terry Pratchett a little bit. So I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I'm definitely going to be doing a review of this one too. So, so next I have S which is a collaborative book between J.J. Abrams and Doug Dorst. Uh, this is one book, two readers, A World of Menace, Mystery, and Desire. A young woman picks up a book left behind by a stranger. Inside it are his margin notes, which reveal a reader entranced by the story and its mysterious author. She responds with notes of her own, leaving the book for the stranger, and so begins the unlikely conversation that plunges them both into the unknown. The book, The Ship of Theseus, the final novel by a prolific but enigmatic writer named V. M. Straka, in which a man with no past is shanghaied into a strange ship with a monstrous crew and launched into a disorienting and perilous journey. The writer, Straka, the incendiary and secretive subject of one of the world's greatest mysteries, a revolutionary whom, about whom the world knows nothing apart from the words he wrote. The readers, Jennifer and Eric, a college senior and a disgraced grad student, both facing crucial decisions about who they are, who they might become, and how much they're willing to trust another person with their passions, desires, hurts, and fears. Um, so yeah, it just sounds really interesting, sounded really interesting to me, and then when I got it and saw inside and like all the additional little pieces that go with it, uh, letters and notes and postcards, it's just it's really, it's really interesting. I think this is going to be a fun read. I think it's going to be like an experience along with being a read. So 
Next, I have a short little sci-fi read that sounds really good, uh, and I want to get to this one soon. I haven't read any good sci-fi in a while. This is Calypso by Oliver K. Langmead. So the synopsis is, Rochelle wakes from cryostasis to take up her role as an engineer on the colony art Calypso. She finds the ship has transformed into a forest populated by the original crew's descendants who revere her as a saint. She travels the ship, she travels the ship with the Calypso's creator, the Igni... the Igni... Why am I having trouble with that word today? Enigmatic Sigmund and Catherine, a bioengineered marble who can communicate with plants, uncovering a new history of humanity forged while she slept. She discovers a legacy of war between botanists and engineers, a war fought for the right to build a new earth, a technological paradise, or a new Eden in bloom untouched by mankind's past. And Rochelle, the last awake, holds the balance of power in her hands. So that sounds really interesting. It sounds like a lot to cram into such a small book. Next I have Home is Where the Bodies Are by Geneva Rose. So this is a horror slash thriller about three estranged siblings who reunite after their parents' death to, to end up finding a VHS tape of a home movie of a night they don't remember that reveals on the tape their father covered in blood and a dead body and the possibility that their parents may have been involved in killing somebody. Now they have to figure out what exactly happened. A couple of other booktubers I watched have talked about it and talked positively about it. So I went ahead and picked it up. This next one I feel like I'm seeing everywhere. <laughs> when I pre-ordered it, I didn't know anything about it, but now everybody's talking about it. This is Five Broken Blades by Mai Corland. Uh, the pitch of it basically is five of the most untrustworthy warriors in the land have to come together, get past their untrustworthiness, and learn to trust each other to form an alliance to take down a god king. You've got Asian influence, you've got the you've got a samurai style story. That's all I needed to be interested. Doesn't hurt doesn't hurt that uh, uh, the book itself, all of the versions I've seen, is is sexy as hell. So, okay, the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's get into the Discworld stuff. Now, just to preface, I did not intend to get this much Discworld all at once. Just kind of happened that way. Um, I didn't intend to get into this world. Anywho, let's get into this. So this first one's a little bit morbid, uh, but I'm a little bit morbid, so. It says, Shaking Hands with Death. It's written by Terry Pratchett. Not long after he found out he had Alzheimer's and was going to die from it. Um, an essay on his belief in your right to choose how you die. I have been accused of having a preoccupation with death. I think that's a bit misleading or a misunderstanding of my thoughts on the subject. Um, but mortality is certainly something I've thought a lot about in the last several years since my mother died. The idea of somebody having the right to not suffer is, yeah, something I believe in. Uh, so I can fully understand why Terry would feel that way and why he would write something like this. So I thought it was worth reading. I do know uh, there was a speech uh, where I think it was a good friend of his because he was wasn't able to, to actually give the speech at the time, gave the speech, um, but I wanted to read it and, and actually have a copy. So, so next, <laughs> and definitely more cheery, The Science of This World by Terry Pratchett with Ian Stewart and Jack Cohen. 
Uh, so this course takes place in Discworld uh, and the wizards of Discworld basically create Earth within Discworld. Um, and this is an exploration of the differences in how things work in this world versus the way they work on Earth and kind of taking the piss out of the real world, right? Um, I wanted to read this one because I watched a, I guess it would be either a conference or a talk would be the way to describe it, uh, where uh, the Terry and the, the other two authors talked about the book uh, and it was just it amused me so next I picked up moving pictures uh, so don't know a whole lot about this one uh, basically I saw a lot of people give the comparison uh, it's basically soul music but movies and I like soul music a lot like film I appreciate filmmaking a lot so that felt like the next natural step in the way I've been approaching this world so this will actually be the next one I plan on reading here's where things for the next two get normal by everybody else's standards of this world that I ever hear because when you hear people talk about this world it's either read it in publication order or read these groups the death group the knights the city watch the witches blah blah start with guards guards start with guards guards so my approach to this world has been completely different from everybody else guards guards okay <laughs> i got guards guards somebody is trying to overthrow the patrician of ankh morport which is one of if not the most major city in this world and they are trying to do so by summoning a dragon to attack the city and the city watch is going to have to get involved and and save the day um and these this is i believe me pretty sure the first book of the city watch and this one is one i could never stop hearing about this was from a friend of mine who doesn't actually read much he would not shut up about this book so i picked up a copy on the sole principle that he picks up his copy he supposedly has and if he doesn't he pick one up and he reads it you know who you are if you're watching this video hogfather is I believe the last book in the death collection death does Christmas <laughs> it's basically what this is uh, the whole hog father thing hogs watch is, is Christmas in in this world is or their version of Christmas I'm only going to read this on one condition so the next one I picked up because uh, it seemed to me to be one of the most unique in that it didn't appear to be another one in the core Discworld series like it. Not a novel. It's not a graphic novel. This is Last Hero. Of course, by Terry, written by Terry Pratchett, but with art by Paul Kidby. I'm about to say Kirby. Cohen the Barbarian. Is an old, worn-out hero. Because his better days are behind him, uh, and so to have one last hurrah, he wants to return what return, I guess, to the gods what the first hero stole from them. Problem is, by doing this, it's going to begin the end of the world. I love that it's in this large large print this large book too uh, this is it's a shame it's not a hardcover but it's really nice and finally and i was not expecting this if 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 i had known i would have gotten a standard basic ass edition but here we are the ultimate Discworld companion by Terry Pratchett and Stephen Briggs. 
Look at this monster! This thing's huge! It's a beast! This is, this has got to be the biggest book I own! You're not going to sit with this thing in your lap and, and flip through it, right? But the bigger deal is, look at the size of that spine. pounds it weighs 10 pounds so that's gonna do it for this gargantuan book haul uh, I still need to of course film these books so that I can edit that footage in um, hope you enjoyed it and I will speak to you guys next time let me know down in the comments what you've picked up in the last little bit and uh, let me know what you think of this beast. I'll talk to you guys next time. Keep reading.